Okay, let's uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for these words. We thank you for these um, all the exhortation, God, for this reminder from your word that uh, you will, Lord, what you you will do, what you said you will do, God, that you will teach, that you will instruct, and uh, your desire is that that you will guide with your eye, Lord, even those minute, Lord, uh, uh, promptings um, with your eye, Lord. And Lord, I uh, thank you that you called us, Lord, to that place of intimacy. You invited us, each one of us, to that place of relationship, to that closeness of relationship, to receive instruction, teaching, and guidance. Father God, we thank you that it is not from a distance, but Lord, from a place of um, friendship, from a place of uh, walking with you, God, in agreement with you. And so, Lord, we pray, God, that uh, we will, Lord, as we've been warned that um, not to be like the horse or the mule, God, which needs to be forced to be brought to you, brought to a person. But God, that we will not be like that. That we will come willingly of our own accord, or joyfully, um, to your presence, God. And we choose to do that this morning. You know, let's uh, let's just tell the Lord, Lord, I, I come to you, God. I come to you willingly. I come to you with my whole heart wholeheartedly i come to you lord you are the source of life you are the truth um, lord you have the words of eternal life your words are spirit and they are life lord we thank you that you are the source of hope and comfort and lord we come to you god we draw near to you master to receive and to stay in that place of life we thank you father god we thank you master Change us, Lord. Change us from the inside out. Change us, Lord. I pray for renewal right now. I pray for restoration. I pray for strength, God. I pray for renewal of everything that may have been lost or that is uh, uh, that is low right now. I just pray that may it increase in Jesus' name. May it increase in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Um, let's also take some time to just pray for, you know, since we are studying about marriage and uh, let's pray for those, um, you know, those in our families or, you know, maybe for our own marriage or, you know, those uh, who need strength, you know, who need life in their marriage, right? Who need uh, restoration, reconciliation, um, who need joy in their marriage. So if you know of people, you know, you can just pray for them by name. Uh, let's take some time to do that, a couple of minutes to do that. We thank you. We bless your name, God. We bless your name. We bless your name. Yes, Lord. Blessing, God. Blessing, blessing, Father God. Your presence, Father God. Your healing presence, oh God. Um, Lord, your joy, Father God. Your strength, God. Your peace, oh God. Your protection, Father God. Yes, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We pray for strengthening of this covenant, oh God. Yes, Lord, whatever the enemy is trying to do, we pray. We just pray for a rebuilding. We pray for a restoration. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. We bring all these um, marriages, Father God, Lord, to your throne of grace, Father God. We pray for an impartation of grace in their marriage. Pray for an impartation, God, a freshness, God, that you would breathe life, Father God. Lord, I pray for repentance and reconciliation, God. I pray for a forsaking of everything that is unhealthy and toxic in their marriage. Yes, Father God. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Lord, I pray that each couple will recognize that you are the creator, the designer of marriage and family. And Lord, I pray for, for every couple to come in accordance and come in alignment, God, with the divine uh, design, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We come with them all into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so last class, we uh, does anyone remember what we finished with? Um, anyone? What did we close with last class? Um, just put it on the chat. Last topic, anything that you recall, take away. One thing that you recall, one thing that you remember, you can put it on the chat. OK. What did we study last class? OK, communication, sharing, <laughs> responsibilities, washing dishes, yes. Um, so that was a, a big part. So the topic that we covered was um, managing uh, our home, right? Uh, a very important aspect because it's going to be um, the married couple starting a family, um, and uh, whatever happens, the dynamics in the home. There's a lot of work, and uh, it's not just one person carrying the load. So there's. Uh, equal amount of sharing of responsibilities and understanding now who's doing what and so uh, so we looked at that okay for us to get an understanding that yes there's a lot of work involved there are uh, responsibilities involved and these are well you know uh, sometimes what happens is people get very you know starry eyed very romantic about marriage which is which is all great um, but also People need to understand that you know it's it's very practical. It's very uh, you know it's a day-to-day -day thing. There are routines, there are schedules, there are uh, you know chores to be done, errands to be you know done, and it's it's not all glossy and everything. It's hard. It's work, right? So so we looked at that, and we also looked at one you know very important aspect of um, uh, you know of time. How do we spend time? Uh, with one another being being intentional about it and and also and also about money about finances right um so a lot of differences happen uh, or crop up because of finances uh, because of uh, spending and different uh, conflicting ideas uh, about spending and so on so we looked at uh, finances and how one can come to an understanding uh, of that Right. Um, and understanding of financial goals um, and sharing of financial goals, um, etc. And we also looked at one more aspect when it comes to managing our home about uh, um, about our extended family, or you know, about parents, about in-laws, um, those who are elderly, um, those who do not anyone else to care for. So we looked at all those aspects, you know, and how initial days of marriage uh, the initial months or season it's it's better if the couple stays um separately uh, in the sense uh, you know without any other influence um you know dictating their schedules because they're just getting used to each other and managing the home making decisions and so on so if there's um others who are crowding in influencing that and intruding then it uh, it is challenging, right? But we also understand that there are certain circum you know situations where that cannot be avoided. You know, maybe the parents are elderly, maybe the parents are let's say they cannot care for themselves, and so on. Like you know, it could be um, yeah either a set of parents or a parent you know who's widowed maybe. Um, so in 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 such circumstances, how do we how do we handle? You know, how do we handle decisions? How do we handle time uh, or in terms of privacy in the home and so on? So um, these are things that need to be, it's it's good if it is discussed. Right? It is good if there is an understanding uh, by by both, uh, you know, both the husband and the wife in, in this matter. So then it makes things easier. Uh, and it also helps in resolving conflicts in a very healthy manner. Right. Okay, so today we're going to look at chapter eight, which is um, uh, again a very important aspect of marriage. In fact, this is uh, one thing which everybody thinks immediately, or uh, you know, a, a big, uh, re a big uh, what do you call factor or um, a reason? Uh, you know, 
people think about this and then they say okay um okay maybe i need to get married for this this reason you know which is sex and sexuality okay fulfilling of sexual desires so uh, we're going to talk about this um and um yeah i will also share the ppt as we go along so it's it's a it's an important topic in the sense um you know in different cultures uh you know we know that it is it is not discussed openly right openly in the sense uh, uh um the the groom and the and the bride and the groom you know between them it is not discussed or even uh, uh individually uh, one might have a well a faulty understanding one might have a deficient understanding of it and maybe not necessarily a biblical understanding of it right? so much of um the talk about sex and sexuality uh, in in culture is is what the media popularizes and and praise god for christian media praise god for the voice that the church has so there's a lot of content out there in you know in today's uh, social media and popular media about sex and sexuality right uh, there are wonderful ministries even you know there is uh, um uh, in the west and even right home right here uh, you know in india wonderful ministries uh, about family about marriage which uh, which have a strong voice you know talking about different things which uh, maybe the uh, you know as a community of believers as a church even um people have not people have hesitated to address these topics you know not really talked about it because uh, oh well culturally traditionally um, you know it's not our custom you know it's or we feel a little uh, i don't know uh, uncomfortable to talk about it and and so on so right so but it's it's an important aspect again it's an important aspect where people again it's um, you know if one does not have a biblical understanding um, it's 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 possible that people you know uh, it's it's possible that it creates a lot of conflict it creates um, uh, you know uh, it even people get separated based on this and and also sometimes people just suffer silently right because it's uh, you know where can we go to where can we talk about this it feels like uh, you know uh, if it be i feel so ashamed to talk about it uh, can i even talk about it there's so much of stigma attached to it right so um so let's uh, let's look at chapter 8 right and and look at what the word of god talks about sex about sexuality right um and so um, so let's look at that okay so so we see that um, you know it's an important part of marriage it's a big part of uh, one part of marriage i won't say big part one part of marriage uh, because this is how the lord created us right lord created us male and female and the lord design marriage and uh, sexual intimacy uh, is part and parcel of it right um we see that um, marriage is uh, you know sex is not just for procreation but it's also an expression of intimacy it is also uh, something that god created to be enjoyed between the husband and the wife right so um so let's look at a few um scriptures right let's uh, look at um, hebrews chapter 13 okay let me just uh, share the screen okay okay um we put it as pg13 because uh, we shared this message in church and so we just wanted to make sure that uh, you know it, it should be age appropriate so in for that particular sunday i remember you know we just made sure that there were no you know um, 13 or less than 13 uh, folks in the in the in the church in the congregation okay so so if you look at hebrews 13 and verse 4 okay um so we we see this like honor marriage okay and um in honoring marriage how okay how do we honor marriage okay this is what it is verse 4 uh, and guard the sacredness 
of sexual intimacy between hus wife and husband. God draws a firm line against casual and illicit sex. Okay, um, if you want to look at the New King James, it says marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled. <coughs> I'm sorry, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So fornication, act of fornication, sex before marriage, adultery, sex uh, with uh, someone who's not your spouse. So fornication and adultery, God will judge. Okay, so uh, talks about the serious um, uh, manner in which God views um, sex in marriage, right? That it is something sacred. And it is sacred because God instituted it. It is sacred because God uh, designed it. It's holy because He He is the one who created, who designed it, right? Okay. So um, when we, if if you need to honor, or if marriage is honorable, marriage is uh, well, in God's eyes, He esteems marriage um, to be honorable and to be on honored. Therefore, the husband and wife uh, should also do the same, and uh, God their uh, intimacy and guard the nature of sexual intimacy uh, the sacredness of sexual intimacy uh, it should be guarded right and uh, have boundaries so that there is no uh, sex outside of marriage uh, even right? okay let's look at um, uh, 1 corinthians 7 Okay, um, verses one to six. Okay, so so uh, let's say you know uh, just before going um, to that, um, uh, we mentioned about uh, fornication, which is sex before marriage. Okay, so there could be you know there could be instances where uh, maybe a couple uh, or just one person um, you know had or was uh, having a relationship, a sexual relationship before their marriage, right before. Uh, before their marriage with someone else, maybe with the same person, whatever. So the thing is, um, okay, what should I do? Right? What should that person do? Um, the uh, the right thing to do is, of course, to repent and forsake. Right? To repent of that, uh, to come to God and ask for forgiveness and uh, and to cut away those ties. Right? To ask God for cleansing, to ask God for uh, restoration, healing, wholeness. Um, and to do that, right? And if it is an extramarital affair, which resulted in, you know, uh, um, which resulted in uh, adultery, sexual relationship, then also, right, to ask for forgiveness, to ask forgiveness from the spouse, um, to to be restored, relationship to be restored, trust to be built up, rebuilt, and and to guard that. Okay, so it's important that uh, one should one should do that, right? Think about healing and uh, cleansing. Ask for cleansing and healing, and and be restored. Uh, you know, before continuing, right? Okay. So when we look at one Corinthians seven and verses one to six, okay, we're going to read from the message, and we're going to also look at the New King James. So one Corinthians seven. Um, was one to six. Okay, let's look at the uh, you know message version. So it says now getting down to the questions you asked in your letter to me. First, is it a good thing to have sexual relations? Okay, so so the, the Corinthian church has been asking, uh, writing to Paul about various things, right? Food offered to idols, um, uh, you know about communion, about uh, various things. Um, uh, so so Paul is addressing one by one, and also it comes down to marriage. So. Saying this, you know, is you know, this is some these are some questions that you have asked. Um, so, uh, so he says he addresses that, and he says, certainly, you know, is it good? Uh, but only within this context, only within a certain context, it's good for a man to have a wife, and for a woman to have a husband. Sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. Um, the marriage bed must be a place of mutuality, the husband seeking to satisfy his wife and wife seeking to satisfy her husband. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. Marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or out. Um, abstaining from sex is permissible for a period of time if you both agree to it, but if it's for the purposes of prayer and fasting, and but only for such times, then come back together again. Um, 
Satan has ingenious way of tempting us when we least accept it. I'm not understand commanding these periods of abstinence, only providing my best counsel if, if you should choose them. Okay, so, um, so Paul is, uh, you know, giving his counsel and also the biblical perspective of uh, sex in marriage, right? So, um, if you, if you, you, and, you know, if you read um, uh, from the New King James, you know, it says, "Now concerning the things of which I you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her." So it's you know, so he's talking about sex, and he's talking about affection. So, um, so, so we see we we come to a certain understanding of uh, you know about sex, uh, what it is. It is an expression of affection. Right? So, it, and he also goes on to say that, um, uh, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. And do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, but come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Uh, but I say this as a concession, not as a commandment. Okay. So uh, several things that we understand from, from this passage. Okay. So if you look at verse 2, so it says, um, well, uh, he's saying, okay, um, it is okay or it is good for let me look at verse two yeah it is good to, is you know the message version talks about balanced and fulfilling sexual life right uh, that each man have his own wife and lead let each man, woman have her own husband so um sex in marriage to be fulfilling to be balanced um uh, satisfying right so uh, which is mentioned there then we go on to verse three so verse three talks about how it is a place of mutuality, meaning, uh, you know, the New King James says, let's the husband render to his wife the affection, and likewise also the wife to her husband. So, um, so it is uh, an expression of uh, uh, expression of affection, uh, expression of intimacy, expression of love, and of course there is enjoyment and pleasure and fulfillment in that. Right. So we see that, okay, the Bible is very clear, okay. Um, so we understand that, okay, it's not just for the sake of procreation, right, having children, so on, but it's also for the purpose of fulfilling enjoyment, intimacy, expression of love and affection, right. Then uh, verse 4 says, um, uh, it's not a place to stand up for your rights. It's a decision to serve. So it's uh, so we understand that it is um, you know it's not because of withholding or because of forcing oneself on the other person. You know it's not like a weapon to be used. It's not uh, you know uh, an area where uh, you know it's it's not an area of manipulation to get your own thing. You know to get your own rights. Um, it's not that, but it's actually serving one another okay so um it's uh, you know it's a, it's a decision to serve one another if you look at um, um so, so verse four is very clear uh in new king james you know when you see it you know does not have authority in the sense that uh, it's um it's it also brings a wonderful picture that both of both the husband and the wife belong to each other right um, that uh, the husband belongs to the wife and the wife belongs to the husband. So, so it not to be treated in a shameful manner, not to be shame, not be treated in a violent manner, not to be treated, uh, you know, in any undignified, degrading manner, but to to really esteem one another, to know that okay. <laughs> Sorry, you know what what we see in Ephesians five, uh, what we read, read in Ephesians five about um, about nurturing, about uh, nourishing one another, cherishing one another, right? So, uh, and to treat one another as uh, esteemed, purchased, uh, esteemed possession, right? Okay, 
So um, also verse 5 talks about, OK, you, you can choose to abstain from sex. That's an individual choice, maybe you know, for whatever reason. Um, but he says that, you know, you let it not be for a prolonged, prolonged season. You know, you don't withhold, you don't punish the other person, uh, which is verse four, actually. Um, you know, it's not an act of punishment to the other person, you know, because you had a mis I mean, disagreement or misunderstanding or some kind of conflict. And then, you know, it's uh, you, you don't choose to punish the person in that manner by withholding. Um, uh, you know, so he says that, and then okay, verse five, you choose to abstain, maybe even for you know uh, fasting, prayer, and and so on, for whatever reason, it's fine. But then uh, understand that this is an area which comes under attack. You know, uh, so Satan uh, attacks um, even this area. So therefore, uh, especially this area, and uh, the temptation, and so on. So. You know, it's good that you there is intimacy in marriage. Right? Um, Proverbs five talks about um, again the sacredness of marriage. Um, it, it talks about uh, you know uh, intimacy in marriage. It also talks about the fact that uh, you know that one needs to be faithful in this area uh, with your spouse. Okay, so. Um, you know, it uses very, um, uh, what do you call, uh, you know, uh, figurative language, right? So, uh, you know, it's interesting. Proverbs 5, verses 15 to 19, uh, drink water from your own cistern and running water from your own well. You know, it's, you know, you have your own source. So you, you know, receive from that. You know, should your fountains be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the street, let them be for your own, not to, not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the youth, uh, wife of your youth, and so on. So, um, so it's very, very, um, you know, very clear that there there needs to be faithfulness, there needs to be commitment, and uh, yes, you know, um, this is an area where you you enjoy, but it is only with your spouse. And uh, you know, verse 19, as a loving deer and a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love. So, um, so, so the Bible is very clear. So the Bible is not against, um, you know, against sex. Uh, let's, we'll come to this. So the Bible is not against sex, OK? So the Bible is not against, uh, uh, you know, indulging in sex. After all, God designed it. So the thing is this: that uh, somehow in popular media, you know, that's the, you know, that's the understanding, unfortunately, and uh, and for whatever reason, you know, if if the church is silent on it, then uh, then the enemy just becomes louder and louder, and and instead of the truth um, being engraved in people's hearts, the influence is popular media, the influence is whatever, you know, uh, comes um, uh, and what, whatever, you know, uh, source of influence um, is there, which is, um, which is speaking, which is louder, which is prevalent, and which seems to be, uh, you know, packaging the message attractively and say, okay, okay, this is fine, you can do whatever you want. Um, you know, it is as long as it's, uh, you know, it is, you know, the message sometimes is as long as it's consensual, right? It is fine. You know, it's it's okay. Um, but that's that's not what what I've got very clearly says. There are boundaries, and the context is marriage. Okay. So, um, so what we see is that uh, a sexual relationship is actually in marriage is an expression of commitment right it's an expression saying that i'm committed to you and to you only okay it is also an expression of intimacy intimacy meaning you know you're making yourself so vulnerable so open and it's only with your spouse okay so that kind of intimacy is reserved it's it's unique it's reserved only for your spouse and it's also an expression of pleasure right to uh, uh, to serve one another in that matter for want of a better word you know, serve to give pleasure and to receive pleasure 
it's mutual right so um so let's look at uh, another scripture which is 1 corinthians 6 um okay so 1 corinthians 6 verses 16 to 20. Uh, let me just read from um um, from the New King James, and then we look at this. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh, but he who is joined to the Lord, one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. He who commits sexual immorality sins, immorality, sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have from God, and you are not your own. Uh, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, let's look at the message um, version. There's more to sex than mere skin on skin. Sex is as much spiritual mystery as physical fact. As written in scripture, the two became become one. Since we want to become spiritually one with the master, we must not pursue the kind of sex that avoids commitment and intimacy. You know, leaving us more lonely than ever, the kind of sex that can never, um, sorry, um, yeah, um, that can never become one. Okay, I, I couldn't see that. Um, let me just share that again. Okay, right, and um, verse 18, there is a sense in which sexual sins are different from all others. In sexual sin, we violate the sacredness of our own bodies. These bodies that were made for God given and God modeled love for becoming one with another. Or didn't you realize that your body is a sacred place, the place of the Holy Spirit? Don't you see that you can't live however you please squandering what God paid such a high price for. The physical part of you is not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole work. So let people see God in and through your body. Okay, so, um, so very clear. So we see um, that it's, um, you know, it's a process of becoming one. You know, when we looked at uh, become one becoming one we saw uh, the other aspects you know understanding uh, sacrifice uh, uh, and then um, you know coming to a place of uh, um, walking together place of agreement in various areas um, compatibility and so on right so the fact is that it is a mystery in the sense this becoming one so the physical act of sex actually um you know is it is contributing to that okay so so the thing is that if that is violated then um then then you know there is no becoming one or there is no intimacy between the husband and the wife right so it is to be the second thing that we see is that it is also to be enjoyed okay it is to be enjoyed in the context of marriage so um which is which is fine it is between husband and wife and this honors God. Okay, this really honors God. So He created the bodies, and He designed marriage. So we honor God when we, um, when we, in the context of marriage, you know, when there's sexual intimacy. Okay, so the, if the context changes, if the boundaries are, you know, not honored, then we do not honor God. Very simple, right? The fact is that. Um, God, uh, we are his purchased possession, spirit, soul, and body, including the body. And so um, the Holy Spirit inhabits us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And uh, the physical act of marriage is something sacred. Okay. Right. So there are um, there are a couple of other things that... Um, uh, you know, which are there, which uh, we talk about, um, you know, the physical aspect of marriage, um, uh, a little more practical um, details. And I, I realize that, uh, you know, there are people who are married and people are also not married. 
in, in here. So we we will not go into much detail, but I just want you to you know read through um, the notes and um, you know uh, some of the details which are practical aspects which are mentioned there. So I just want you to read through that, um, and you'll see that it is. Um, it is useful. It is practical. It is something for for those who are, you know, uh, mar uh, planning to get married, preparing for marriage. It is uh, definitely a preparation, something to keep in mind. Uh, and uh, for those of us who are married, maybe it's you know certain things that we have not thought of. Maybe you know there could be some course correction in these areas. Now, I just want to talk about um, you know when, while managing personal sexuality. Okay, so okay, here are some resources. Okay, the beauty of sexual love, the act of marriage. Um, it's it's a wonderful book to read as a as a couple, actually. Um, you know, as individuals who are preparing to get married. Um, as part of marriage counseling, we even uh, you know suggest this uh, for the people who are intending to get married. And another uh, book yeah the act of marriage so you know people who are this by the same authors and along with uh, uh, um, you know uh, mike yorkey so this is also a good resource right so there could be questions like okay what if you know uh, people are beyond 40 you know what about that um, you know is there uh, sexual intimacy even in that age and and so on so it answers all that Okay, so let's. Um, when it comes to managing personal sexuality, so what do we mean by that? First of all, it's first of all, you know, we our sexual drive and our act of, uh, you know, uh, act of fulfilling that. Okay, so that is what we say as personal sexuality. Okay, now, why do we talk about that? You know, because we have a responsibility. Okay. As men, as women, we have a responsibility in this area. And uh, we cannot be irresponsible in this area and still hope for marriage to work. Right? Uh, we cannot cross boundaries and still hope for intimacy in marriage. Okay. Um, so the thing is this, that all sexual affection should be direct, direct, di directed towards our spouse only. Okay. So, so which means that you make a you make a commitment, right? And uh, many times, you know, we uh, people make their vows uh, at the altar. So sometimes it's like you know you, you're so distracted and you're thinking about various things, uh, you know, um, and and maybe they you know they didn't even mean the vows, you know, they just said it. Maybe it was just repeated, uh, you know. You could be in a different frame of mind, but the thing is this: that you made a vow, you made a commitment, and it was in the presence of God as witness. Right? And and this is one, uh, you know, faithfulness and commitment, and and saying that you will not be, you know, un unfaithful. Uh, all that was said at the altar, you know, at the time of marriage. So it's it's very important that that be honored. It is. Uh, there are no options, right? No other options. So, directing all our sexual affections, expression, uh, should be uh, should be towards the spouse, husband towards the wife, wife towards the husband. Okay. There is no plan B in that. Okay. So that's um, very, very important. The, the thing is this. Oops. Sorry. That. So once you've made that commitment, you know, will there be inducements? Will there be temptations? You know, none of us are exempt from that, right? So the reality is, the world that we live in—it's like a hypersexualized world, like you know, where everything uh, that is to be sold, every advertising, every movie, every everything—you know—it it comes, uh, which which comes from a, uh, you know, uh, from a secular source, like right? not a Christian biblical. Uh, you know, background. So obviously, there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, among other things, this also. Right? Uh, so, so if there is, a, if there is a suggestion, you know, maybe, you know, you're not fulfilled. 
in marriage regarding your sexual relationship so find it in somewhere no that's a lie you know find it in someone else that's a lie no so that can be an argument you know that um, especially men they say you know, i'm not satisfied or um, the wife is uh, refusing you know there are there are there's a bigger argument there's a bigger question behind that you know there is um, uh, because it's the sexual um, the act of sex is not just an isolated act right there's a lot which goes be before after you know it is an act of intimacy it's culminating in sex so it it depends on okay you know uh, how how is the relationship you know how's the conversation how is your honoring of each other so it's all of that uh, it, it depends on all of that right so so it cannot be an isolated thing so let's say you know the man has been not or the woman has not been honoring has not been has been talking uh, you know disrespectfully and uh, there's been no closeness no conversations uh, no expression of love otherwise no expression of affection non sexual affection and uh, and then come to a place of you know saying okay i need sex in marriage and then obviously you know they uh, maybe there is a refusal and then you know people come to that place saying okay uh, i'm not satisfied if you're not satisfied in marriage um you know it is uh, so therefore uh, i can find uh, sexual fulfillment in someone else no there is no reason that is not an argument um, that's not a reason to go looking for sexual fulfillment in any other right so being faithful being committed uh, honoring the covenant means that you find sexual fulfillment in in your spouse so if there is a problem if there is an issue then you look and you see you know there is some other reason and that needs to be sorted that needs to be discussed talked about because sex cannot happen in isolation okay um so that's the thing so refuse the thought that you can find sexual fulfillment through other means okay then the other thing you know which is even more pre prevalent now is that um pornography and uh, you know other means other other sexual cont content which is there on the internet which is there you know on the in the media so um and uh, to refuse that you know so the lie is that okay if you if you consume that or if you if you view those things then then your sexual life will be you know will be better okay, that's the lie right so some people buy into that okay i want to you know have a uh, like a satisfying sexual life and maybe this will add to it or this will help me no it will just take you into bondage it's going to create more uh, distance emotional distance between you and your spouse so that is again a lie it's not going to help but rather break down uh, you know relationship and and also create certain un uh what's the word uh, uh, unrealistic expectations right uh, about sex so uh, you know so the thing is to refuse that and also refuse fantasize you know uh, sexual fantasies you know, in the sense sometimes it's not just um, it's not just these uh, you know pornography or anything but it's just there in your mind right there is a fantasy and sexual fantasies and so on fantasizing about this person and that person and the other so refuse all that you know you, people might say okay it's just in my mind right it's uh, i'm not having a physical relationship it's just in my mind now that what happens in the mind we know you know romans 12 talks about that that uh, uh, you know there is transformation only only if there's renewing of the mind so whatever is going on in the mind is is going to you know there's an outworking of it in the physical realm with your choices your behavior and everything so you cannot change that outworking of behavior and choices unless our mind is renewed to the truth so uh, refuse you know uh, completely decide against to pay over consecrate sexual uh, affections uh, before god and this dedicate them for your spouse you know this is honoring god and spouse with your body so the thing is this that um, um uh, that uh, you make a very you know uh, uh, 
it's a hard or a, uh, you know uh, eternal decision i would say that you decide saying okay this is it you know i'm married to this person and this is the only person that i'm going to have sex with you know sometimes you need to tell tell yourself that this is the only person so you're going to refuse all other invitations you're going to refuse any other substitutes right uh, you will refuse all that and and that's honoring god and and that actually honors god and you're honoring your spouse and you're being faithful to your spouse and many times you know um, what happens is what if my spouse is, um what if my spouse is un unfaithful you know uh, so therefore uh, if my spouse is unfaithful or was unfaithful um, therefore i can it gives me permission to do this you know i have the moral right to do this um you know it is an for me uh, it is it is my way of getting revenge it is my way of you know it doesn't it doesn't help solve the things it does in fact it worsens everything so that is not the solution right even in the face of unfaithfulness you choose to do what is right right in marriage you choose to do uh, what is the right thing what is god honoring uh, you choose to stay the course stay st uh, strong and stay committed you do the right thing right okay we'll take a break and uh, we'll come back in 10 minutes okay thank you <laughs> 